Good evening and welcome to Umsamo Encounters. Today you're joined by myself, Siabong Mkize, not my father, Dr. Vivi Ope Hindaba Mkize. Today we will be discussing a thorny and interesting topic, feminism and reconciling it in an African context. I'm Lea. Today I have three phenomenal women who will assist us in unpacking this topic and really get to the heart of what feminism is, more particularly what African feminism is and how we can apply it to the challenges that we're facing right now. I am joined by Candice Chirwa, a master's student in international relations who has also had experience working with the United Nations. Ukokum Lahegi from the Traditional Healers Organization to bring that wisdom and experience. And of course, Niko Lebohang Bashikombane, who is a master's student who's actually doing a, her dissertation primarily focusing on organizing feminism and also African feminism. Ladies, welcome and thank you very much for joining us thank this you evening. Uh, I'd like to begin by really defining feminism globally and, and, and let's just take it a few steps back so that people understand the progression of feminism. So Candace, can you please enlighten us on the history of feminism and what exactly feminism is and globally what it was. All right, so feminism has always um, originated, well, theoretically it's, it has originated within the American context. We had the first wave, which sort of was the fight for um, the denial of civil and political liberties for women in America. And essentially the first wave laid the theoretical foundations for the human rights system. Um, and so the first wave is sort of a liberal framework and hence the liberal framework within the human rights system tends to preach notions of neutrality and universality and universality is actually exclusionary in nature and this is why you know a lot of african feminists or uh, other varied feminists tend to say that liberal feminism or feminism in general does mm. not cater for the experiences of african women or global south women experiences mm. Mm. so nico I, I understand that you are doing your masters at the moment focusing on African feminism and organization of feminism in an African context. So can you please enlighten, following on what Candace has said, um, that feminism is based on your lived experiences and we can understand that the social, political, economic context of the Americans and the Europeans is different to that of the Africans. Mm. So can you please enlighten us on how African feminism came about and the necessity for African feminism? Um, so I do agree very much with what Candace says about the, universe, like the universality mm -hmm. of global feminism erases uh, femin the feminism of the South. So if we're going to say that um, feminism starts from uh, the West, mm. right, altogether, mm. then I think it's to give power to a Eurocentric education mm. Mm. Um, and colonial education altogether, which is why we have a lot of people who comment and say mm. that, you know, feminism is a Western concept, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But when we understand its theory, um, then we can sort of understand how certain matriarchal um, societies in Africa were feminist in nature altogether. Mm. So when you look at Ethiopia, for mm. example, when you look at Ghana, you mm. see Even matriarchal Angola. societies yeah. th across the continent. Yeah. We, can, we have very strong examples of this. But the kind of feminist theory that I think we have most access to, or that is most accessible, mm. really engages with, say, the the desire for political participation mm. of women mm -hmm. um, in the global global north, right? So, and when you look at the African context, right, men were invited into civility or citizenship before right. women. So mm. therefore, and they were left in rural areas or in communities to then lead um, cultural and indigenous and native lives mm. rather than mm. to engage with the world of the white man. And so most of our feminist history then becomes unrecorded. Um, mm. is un mm. is, is we're miseducated on it and we kind of look for examples of feminism in micro or, or spaces 
resources that are limited mm. rather than understanding mm. the importance that women played in leadership, in yeah. designing our civilization and in running mm. our civilization and as Africans hence, before the encounter with uh, whiteness. Mm. Yeah, hence why I said theoretically, because I mean, my first encounter with feminism was from a Western perspective. You're always told that feminism originated in America with the first, second and third wave. And mm. obviously in a high school context, you're, ne you're not necessarily endowed with critical thinking. So you always assume that, okay, Americans started feminism. That's that's mm. totally okay. But when you get into a, in a space in, in university where it allows you to critically think, then you sort of question as to why feminism has not been documented when you had Queen Nzinga, for example, in Angola. Mm. You had a lot of matriarchal mm. queens ruling empires, a lot of... So it, it's, it, it's actually bewilders me as to why we ha don't have feminism within an African context pre-colonial mm. Africa, but it always traces back to starting in the West. Mm. Thank you. I, I like the fact that, Nico, you touch on the fact that we've been practicing feminism and in, through our matriarchal structures in, in, in Africa, we just haven't documented it. Mm. So, Koko Mlachek, I'd like you to come with the wisdom and experience and Ustra Zelenga Banzuguti, Umama, um, previously, because yeah. a lot of us believe that, uh, and a lot of um, Western feminism has, has painted a picture of African culture that it's very oppressive of women, based on Western feminism. So can you please enlighten us on the role that Umama plays in the home, and the leadership that she, that she plays, and that it's not oppressive in nature, and to demonstrate to us, please, Goko, Ngogwe Siko, Umama Wenzani. Okay, of course, culturally, mm. a mother is a pillar of, of the house. She's there to provide also for her husband and for her children and for the community as well. So it is very important not to undermine women. The, the word feminism, it can be put in different ways or you can categorize in many ways. But when it comes to Africa, women have been there liberated women have been there to mm. advocate the environment itself and mm. to advocate to empower themselves so feminism it's not just about being in in the uk or in in, in the other countries but mm. it it has been there for for decades mm. this is where i am saying now i do agree with them because it has not been documented mm -hmm. as such. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do have females who have been queens of the, uh, of the nations, but the only queen that we heard about is the, the only queen which was Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what about the Nzingwa ones? Mm -hmm. what the, what, how about the Mangwai one, which was not even recognized as she was a queen? And she mm -hmm. was a queen. Mm -hmm. And people were not even recognizing that. So I, I fail to understand why do we have to think about feminism as it's something from UK or mm. United States or uh, America or anywhere in the, in, in the world, except for us as, uh, mm. as women, as mm. black women and mm. uh, as Africans, it has been there for, for life. So Manje Koko, what do you think are the implications of not understanding Uguti? A woman has always been empowered in African culture and the onus is on us mm -hmm. to always remain empowering her because I feel we don't understand we fully don't understand okay. our own culture and African culture and because we don't understand it the way in which we we exercise it okay. or apply it mm -hmm. um, and because it hasn't been documented how it should be done mm -hmm. has led to abuse and has led to discrimination of of women and 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 such in, in such a way that people feel um, African culture is solely patriarchal and oppressive. African culture is a very very beautiful culture. You can never change that, and it's not as oppressive as people think. It's only in their minds that it is like that, but it is not. It is only up to us as women to stand up and say. This is how it should be done. There must be books that are being done, or you must write books for children at school. All the primary schools should learn, should know, 
every boy child, every girl child, it's not about just women, but you are now saying to me, I'm just going to teach a girl about how to be a woman tomorrow, but what about the boys? Mm, mm, feminism. Mm. That's a very big word. But mm. how do we differentiate feminism to culture? Mm, because mm. these two things match. They do match. Mm. Mm. Yes. So what we do at Umsama is we do document and we record and we develop a lot of literature around African culture and applying it to different to different problems and scenarios and challenges that we're facing in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if anyone else has done the same thing, but I'd like to, to speak to our two academics in training to see, you do a lot of extensive reading in yeah. your research. Okay. How much literature have you come across mm -hmm. um, which promotes African feminism mm. yeah. that, and African culture that it is not oppressive mm. as opposed to research um, which says otherwise? Because I'm trying to get us to understand how much research are we producing which advocates okay. one message as opposed to the other. Because that would directly infect, affect your master's dissertation. Right, okay. right. I think for me it's been very hard to um, sort of access literature that doesn't necessarily paint African women to be seen as the problem. Yes. And that's the issue with feminism. It's, it always paints, Western feminism always paints women, uh, African women as the problem and that yeah. we don't have our own free will and our own agency. Mm. And in attempts to generalize that cultural practices are oppressive. It never, it always assumes that because African women don't have their own voice that whatever cultural practice she goes through, she's therefore being oppressed. And so mm. for me, it's, I mean, being at a Western institution being VITS, it's always hard to actually access that information and find it. it, it it's, it's, it's actually very troubling. Yeah. I think you could also speak on that as well. Oh, I disagree. Really? I have found a <laughs> library full Hook of African up. feminist oh. writers. Mm. And I think I should correct myself because earlier I said that African feminism wasn't documented. And then I also said that it wasn't as accessible as Western feminism. But okay. what we've latched on to in this conversation is the part where I said that it wasn't documented, right? Mm. That mm. is partly untrue as well. There are tons of writings mm -hmm. on African feminisms, um, but they're not as accessible, mm. right? Of course, more work can always be done. Right. But I think at this point, our problem is access, right? right? Shajila Patel once tweeted, about her fear of colonial feminism mm. the idea that we're going to sort of engage in a feminism that is quite colonial yes. in the global south mm -hmm. simply because of what kind of feminism is more accessible to us than mm. what isn't but i think at the primary at the center of african feminism is an understanding that african cultures or african culture is not one thing right right that african culture is layered with difference, both religious, ethnic, cultural, in language, in aesthetic, how we look, mm. in, you know, it's very, very, very different across different regions. And another thing that I want to highlight in this conversation is that culture is hybrid, mm. right? Mm. It's not one thing that is stagnant, mm. that we carry all the way right mm. culture mm. changes over time because of a difference and you know because of d different things because of political orders mm. because of um ethnic relations because of trade mm. you know um mm. because of industry because of a whole bunch of things but i think at a southern level um at a southern african level what i will say is that our culture was interrupted right by colonialism mm. okay. and mm. what that mm. does is mm. that we deal with we, we we exist in you know through like crossing the lines between two different cultures right mm. and so where we form our opinions about the one being oppressive and the one not being oppressive yes. is because we live a kind of double, double personality, a, a, a double life, right? Mm. And both of these cultures have their own value systems, have their own ideas about gender and who should do what, mm. et cetera, et cetera, mm. et cetera. And so I think for me, what that interruption, what colonialism has then done is of course come through with a kind of a, a masculine superiority complex mm -hmm. that of course <laughs> <laughs> has favored yeah. or of course has worked to the favor yeah. of yeah. African men who yeah. of course now walk within a particular kind of privilege mm -hmm. um, that they would not want to let go mm -hmm. altogether mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and of course when that comes 
who does who does that order favor to educate first right because it wasn't there was a time when women weren't allowed to be educated right mm. and through that education another culture is developed a whole mm. bunch of opinions are, are you, you know what i'm saying mm. so yeah I think. so are we then like saying that patriarchy has existed after during colonialism are we so in terms of how do we process trace how patriarchy came about i don't think that matriarchy or i don't think that pre-colonially mm. you know yes there are matriarchal societies that yeah. continue to exist and thrive today there are patriarchal societies that right. continue to exist patriarchal societies that were probably also there pre-colonially yeah, right? right but for a foreign order yeah. to mm. come onto a native land uh, with natives living on it that is primarily patriarchal mm. in its religion, in its use of language, mm. and in role playing in terms of what women are allowed to do and what women are not allowed to do. Mm. I think that kind of changes the dynamic, and that's right. what we should take into consideration. So I, I really like what you, the way you describe the interruption of mm. our culture, mm -hmm. because I remember I, I love to use this description that. African culture is the host. Yeah. It's this beautiful, fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. But the parasite patriarchy. is patriarchy. Mm -hmm. But the reason that parasites is there is because we were interrupted in our history and colonialism has left room and opened a space for okay. that parasite to infiltrate. And because that parasite is there, there's sometimes an apprehension mm -hmm. to engage and really take on mm -hmm. this, this, this African mm -hmm. culture so that it forms part of our cultural identity. Mm -hmm. Mm. Manje Koko, um, uh, yeah. I want to ask you, what are we doing currently? Because we're, very, we're an oral kind of culture. We pass things down verbally mm. um, through certain customs and traditions. You know, and this, those are the traditions I will never go through in Jungle Fanwa some keys that I'll never go through, and I'll never have those kind of conversations or those pearls of wisdom that mm. actually, as a woman, you are not disempowered by celebrating this African culture. Now, are there, is there, what are we doing, or, or mama with their, with their daughters, mm -hmm. um, to instill that, you are, that this African culture is empowering and not disempowering and removing this parasite, the okay. um, African culture yet? Okay. Mm. 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 depend no ufanele nibambisane nibe ndawonye kodwa ungadependi kakhulu kuye ngoba lokho kukwenza ukuthi ube njalo wena kufike that feminism thing of saying you being undermined mm. now it, it it portrays and it say it fakes the picture of saying you are now a slavery to this man which it's not supposed to be mm. like that mm. yeah it's definitely mm. that's how it should be <laughs> You should be able to stand on your own. Mm. You are allowed to be independent. Mm. As a young woman th these days, you are allowed to be independent. But don't forget where you come from. The, what we teach our young girls today, we are saying, be there, explore, but have in mind that psychological mind of yours. Let it work in such a way that when you finish school, you know exactly who you are, where you come, you're coming from, and where you're going. Mm. That's the only, only thing that you can give the youngsters, mm. especially young women. You build them, you grow them by telling them exactly what is expected from them. Mm. It's not about washing for your, your, your husband or uh, that you can do anyone can do that mm. but these young stars <laughs> need I to have <laughs> whatever they want mm. Mm. but in a right way of not forgetting who their mothers are mm. and who their fathers are mm. so feminism it's something very very deep it's a very deep word if sometimes you'll talk to me as a mother 
I might not even understand the mm. word feminism. You might even say to me, Gogo, define feminism. I'll give you a different story. But this is where it says to us as older women, you see, this is like empowering women. As I said before, you have to be empowered as women. It's not about just being a mother, being there, looking after the family, making teas and cooking in the stove that mm. makes you a woman. There are so many things that women can do. Mm. 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 And you see, you're describing that a woman is not there to just simply go from being her, her, her father's daughter to yes. being her husband's, her husband's wife, wife to being her children, the, the children's mother, mother and yes. then she dies. Yeah. There's more than there's that. There's more, more to being a woman that. There's more than just that. There's, exactly. there's, she can still be all of that, yeah, well. that and more. Mm. You know, um, Candice, I came across your blog, yeah. um, your writing, and mm -hmm. you, put, you put it now when you said, we are aware that women's role in society is to serve, to be weak, to be free from the burden of thinking, mm -hmm. to caretake and nurture others. Mm -hmm. Men's role in society is to be served, so, yeah. to provide, to mm -hmm. be strong, mm -hmm. to think, strategize, mm -hmm. and plan. Mm -hmm. So what happens when, 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 we, when people want to remove, do not want to fulfill these, they want more than just these roles to define who they are? I feel, okay, well, I mean, when men feel that they're not necessarily living up to these roles that mm -hmm. patriarchy has sort of created mm -hmm. and endowed on them, they act violently. Um, when women act out of these roles, then they, sh they are ashamed for it. They are, they are told that, no, in fact, this re they remind you that these are your roles that you're expected to keep. Mm. Um, and so I think one thing that men need to acknowledge is that patriarchy is the single most assaulting disease to yeah. their body. Yeah. It's a mental health issue that mm -hmm. from the moment they are born, they are assigned with the color, they are assigned with roles, they are assigned with expectations. And so men need to ask themselves, are they really free from living their true lives? Because yeah. you're always told that there's a certain way that you should act, there's a certain way that you should behave. And if you don't behave and act this way, then you're considered to be feminine, which is then considered to be weak. When in yeah. fact, Feminine is actually very strong. We yeah. provide life yes. to this world. Mm. Exactly. And so I think that's what men need to sort of acknowledge, that we are power and that being feminine is not necessarily being weak. Mm -hmm. And these roles have to be shattered. As Gogo said, we need to instill confidence and education in young children to yes. ensure that these roles are not necessarily determined from a young age. That when you find out that you're having a girl, you don't necessarily have expectations mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say, you know, she mm -hmm. has to act a certain way, she has to dress a certain so way. Thank you, Candice. Okay. No, um, this is quite an interesting topic. We've just began to speak about patriarchy. Tweet us at Umsamo in some Institute using the hashtag Umsamo Encounters and let us know what you think. We'll be back when we discuss patriarchy and let's remove this parasite from our beautiful host, African culture. Stay right there.